we go. Live chat there. There we go. And live chat here. Welcome everyone to another live stream. Today we're going to be talking about inner rim diameter with the Lasky mouthpieces. Now I've done a talk once before on inner rim diameter. Um, and I played through a bunch of mouthpieces and tried to show the differences. But I wanted to do it again because I got some feedback from that last video that it was hard to keep track of all of the different mouthpieces I was playing and... Um, and what the differences are. So today I wanted to just focus in on what exactly does the inner, diameter, inner rim diameter do to your playing and to your comfort and why choosing the correct inner diameter is so important. Sound wise, what the inner rim diameter does is it controls the width of your sound. So basically, the wider the inner rim diameter, the wider and broader your sound will be. The narrower your inner rim diameter, the more narrow and focused your sound will be. So what I have on my horn right now is a Lasky 85G. So that's the largest inner rim diameter in the Lasky range uh, that's currently being made. So I have heard rumors that they're uh, considering going up to 18.75 and 19. And uh, at the small end, we have, I have a Lasky 70G. By the way, I have all of these Lasky mouthpieces because for the first time in months, Laskys are actually in stock. If you're still waiting for an order, I just want you to know that we didn't get all of the Lasky mouthpieces, but we got most of them. And I have uh, one of everything in um, in, a, in a Morse taper and uh, silver plated. So this is the 85G. This is the 70G, the smallest inner rim diameter in the range. So I hope you guys heard the difference there between the width of sound between the 70G and the 85G. And I just tried to kind of play where the mouthpiece wanted to put me. But in reality, we need to be flexible 
on the types of sounds that we create on um, any piece. So the correct imaging rim diameter will allow you to get a variety of sounds um, instead of just one different sound. So let me compare these two again, just also so you can hear the difference again between the narrowest mouthpiece and the widest mouthpiece. But I'm also gonna play uh, pieces in two different styles. So I'll play a little Mozart again, and I'll play some Brahms. So something that's a little bit more light and airy versus something that's a little bit more broad. And you can see the difference there and switching between two different modes on two different inner diameters. So hopefully I kind of gave you a little taste of the difference between the two sizes. Now how do you find the correct inner rim diameter? Tone, comfort, and flexibility. I used to believe that um, you, you had to choose the inner rim diameter that gave you the best range. Because you would think that the smaller end rem diameters would help with high range and the larger end rem diameters would really help with the low range. But what I figured out over the years is that when you have a strong high range or a strong low range, you could do both on any size uh, in a rem diameter. So, uh, just like when picking other equipment, I would highly recommend that you do not switch equipment to try to fix fundamental problems. I'm not saying that you should never try equipment or that equipment switching is a bad idea, but equipment switching to tackle issues that are better handled by addressing your airflow and relaxation and concept of sound is not a very wise idea. So for example, here's the 70 again. I'll play low and I'll play high and then I'll do the same thing on the 85.
said that was the 70, but that was the 85, and this is the 70. So basically, to prove the point, I wanted to show that you can play low and high easily on both inner rim diameters. Um, now let's talk about things like flexibility. The 85 is much more in the range of what is comfortable for me. Um, because of my uh, large, thick lips, I just tend to feel more comfortable on a larger mouthpiece. And you'll find that to be the case with most people who have, um, who have thicker lips. Um, also flexibility is a lot easier on the bigger um, mouthpiece. Uh, it's just, if you feel like you have more room to move around if you have thick lips and you're using a large mouthpiece. Um, the other thing is that I would believe that my sound is actually too narrow and too focused on the 70. While on the 85, it's a much broader, more hornistic sound. Um, let me demonstrate a little bit of the flexibility and the comfort. And I should say with comfort also comes increased accuracy. So I definitely have better accuracy on the, um, on the larger one. Um, Uh, this is the smaller rim again. So yeah, so that was just a quick demonstration of flexibility. Today's stream is going to be a little short just because I wanted to just, if you want to learn more about inner rim diameter, I, um, I have another video out there featuring our various mouthpieces on the subject. Today I really just wanted to focus in on, because I don't think I made it clear the first time that the main thing in the sound that you're changing is how narrow or how broad it is and if your sound is too narrow before changing to a deeper cup or a bigger bore if someone came to me and told me that was their issue the first thing I would do is uh, start increasing that inner rim diameter and if someone said my sound is too broad and too unfocused I would do the opposite I would have them start using smaller inner rim diameters um, low range pitch was better on the smaller rim. I think that was because it was the second time I was playing it. Um, but yes, I didn't notice that. Um, and, but thank you for the comment. Um, would you use smaller inner rim diameter on high desk cats or keep it the same as a regular double? I would keep it the same. Um, and I do keep it the same. Uh, just because 
at least for me, I'm usually when I'm playing a desk hand, I'm usually switching between the two, whether it's an audition or whether I'm playing a high horn part in an orchestra. Um, I find that the descant horn itself will uh, narrow down the sound. So actually I have a descant within reach that I'll demonstrate that on. So I'm going to use the 85G on uh, this descant. is way more comfortable for me while if I use the you know I forgot to switch mics there so that was probably a clippy mess let me do that again Now I'm going to use the smaller mouthpiece and you can hear the difference. So as you can see, the smaller rim definitely didn't sound better on the desk hit. The same issues cropped up as on the double where the sound was too narrow, um, frankly it's just uncomfortable, and um, just missed a lot more notes, um, had a harder time with the intonation in the high register. So uh, the long way of answering uh, your question is that no, I actually tend to keep the same rim um, the, the, no matter which horn I'm playing. Now, there is benefit to changing the cup. So a lot of people do change um, to a shallower cup with a smaller bore, just because that's going to work better on the F alto horn and be just a bit more um, compatible with it. Um, but I would keep the same rim. Uh, thank you very much for the questions. I didn't schedule this out, so there's very little interaction. Um, but I, I love just talking to people. So, however, it sounds great. Thank you very much. Um, envious of your articulation. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, ah, the wider rim has better pitch on the Bach. Um, I think the low, the low excerpt that I played on the wider rim wasn't very representative of, um, of the pitch there. I would have, the results of my experimentation with these mouthpieces would be that the larger rim just has better intonation for me in general because I'm, I can relax more while playing it. I don't have to try to stuff thick lips into a tiny space. Um, but I've actually got to get going today. So thank you uh, very much for tuning in. Um, I'm really grateful to all of you who bother to watch these either live or, or later on. Um, I, and you're the reason why I keep doing these things. Um, that and um, the products that we have on sale at Houghton Horns. So we have all sizes of, well, most sizes of Lasky's in stock right now. Um, if you're interested, I would get them fast because I don't think they're going to last very long considering how they've been selling over the last few days. Uh, thank you very much. Goodbye, everyone.